bring in one of the lawmakers with whom the Myers met, Republican Senator Katie Britt of Alabama. Uh, Senator Britt, it's so good to have you. Thank you for joining us on the lead. Tell us about when you met Gina and, and Steve Meyer and you heard them tell Katie's story. Absolutely. Well, Jake, thank you so much for allowing me to be on and to talk about such an important topic. So my meeting with Gina and Steve was no doubt one of the most impactful meetings I've had as a U.S. Senator. When you think about how it came about, though, I think it gives you a little bit of a window into the U.S. Senate. I got a phone call from John Fetterman, who said, hey, Katie, I, I want you to take this meeting and let's make it happen today. Um, after that, they came into my office and sat down and began to tell me their story, Jake. And as I listened, probably very much like you, I listened as a parent. Yeah. And I just want to say, um, as remarkable as Katie Myers was on this world, there is no doubt to me where she got her tenacity. What Gina and Steve are doing is just incredible. The resiliency and determination that they are showing in the face of the unthinkable. I mean, they are parents to three beautiful young women, and yet they are not only working to protect them and to continue Katie's, Katie's legacy, but they're working to protect young men and women all across this country from coast to coast. Um, and certainly it was just an incredible meeting to hear the story, to hear their vision, and to be a small part of hopefully being able to, to bring this type of thing into reality nationwide. Um, it's certainly an honor. So I assume that you and Fetterman are talking about how to turn this uh, into a nationwide bipartisan piece of legislation. It doesn't seem like it would cost that much because all you're doing is telling schools just offer students the opportunity to designate somebody uh, as an advisor. That's right. What we're doing is we're going to take a look at what's happening in California, the implementation of the law there. You know, you can learn a great deal from that. Our teams are digging in to look and say, what does the national landscape look like? What would those hurdles be? And how do we work to make something like this a reality from coast to coast? And and look, I mean, John and I, Fetterman and I have worked diligently together on mental health issues. And I think we heard it be said by the Myers um, in the segment that you just played, but this can happen to anyone. This is not a Democrat issue. This is not a Republican issue. This is an American issue. We have an obligation to tackle it as such. And when you think about Katie's story, I mean, she was a highly flourishing, remarkable, all-in individual. When her parents told me she's won a national championship, captain of her team, was an RA, uh, was a Mayfield fellow. I mean, I was about to give a TED talk. I mean, you know that this literally knows no bounds. I was just talking to a wonderful woman woman right before I came on and, and when I told her Katie's story she said that reminds me of what I tell people she said I tell them check on your strong friends too mm. and so I think bringing awareness to the mental health issues in front of us as a nation knowing that when you look at Katie's story her parents will share with you that she had no health history of mental illness or mental health challenges and so to make that a reality to talk to people to to break down the stigma to talk about 988 if you need it. Um, you are never alone. We are always here for you. Yeah. And we need to make sure that our students on college campuses know that too, Jake. And I know you're working with Fetterman on other legislation having to do uh, with mental, uh, mental health. Uh, t tell us um, what and, and why. Why is this an issue uh, that you're active in? Yes, so um, when you look at the mental health challenges of, of our young people, you know, John and I took a look at the data and it, between 2011 and 2019, the rate of depression amongst our young people more than doubled, Jake. That perfectly coincides with the rise of social media. When we got the CDC reports last year and we saw that one in three high school young women actually considered suicide. And then 9% mm. of our high school population, Jake, 9% actually attempted death by suicide. The time for action is now. And so what Fetterman and I have done is come together. Our Surgeon General came out in June of this year and said, social media needs warning labels. And we think, uh, we, we fully agree. You look at what warning labels have done in the industry like tobacco, warning people of the challenges and the health challenges that can occur from using. That's exactly what we want um, in the social media space. So essentially a warning label would pop up 
It wouldn't prevent anyone from using it. It would just make them aware of the mental health challenges that can occur by usage. And as you click through to that, obviously that would be determined by the Surgeon General what is said, but the one thing that Fetterman and I have said is we want to make sure that there is a link to help included on that warning. And we envision that in being something like 988, telling people if you are struggling, we want you to click here, we want you to call this number, we want you to text this, text this number mm -hmm. so that we can get you the help that you need. We're both parents and as Fetterman and I look at these issues, we look at it very similar to John and Steve as parents who wanna do what we, what we can, put up the proper guardrails that will allow our children to flourish and ultimately achieve their American dream. Uh, Republican Senator Katie Britt, uh, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Please come back talking more about these thank issues, you. about these policies. Bring Fetterman with you. We love that big lug. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll be, do it. We'll, we'll do it. Thank all right. You. Sounds good. We'll be right back. I've been